Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pause for Pedagogy, a conversation with Kathy Guthrie on online service learning in leadership education. Uh, we are really thrilled, ILA and I are quite thrilled to welcome Dr. Kathy Guthrie to our inaugural conversation today. Hello, Kathy. Hello. So just to share a little bit more about Kathy, Dr. Kathy L. Guthrie is an associate professor in the higher education program at Florida State University. She serves as the director of the Leadership Learning Research Center as well as the coordinator of the Undergraduate Certificate in Leadership Studies, which is a partnership between the College of Education and the Center for Leadership and Social Change. She currently serves as the Associate Editor for the New Directions in Student Leadership series. Her research focuses on leadership learning, specifically the learning outcomes and environment of leadership and civic education, and the use of technology in leadership education. In 2013, she co-authored Cultivating Leader Identity and Capacity in Students from Diverse Backgrounds. Earlier this summer, a New Directions in Higher Education volume with Kathy, in which Kathy was the co-editor titled Reclaiming Higher Education's Purpose in Leadership Development, which is such a great title, was published. So today, Kathy and I are going to chat about her article, again, the inaugural article for ILA's Pause and Pedagogy series. So we have a series of questions where Kathy's going to give us some more information and her own perspective, background, and ideas related to really a topic that's near and dear, I know, to Kathy's heart, but probably to many of yours as well, uh, talking about online service learning and how technology impacts the work we do in service learning with our students. So Kathy, my first question for you today is, what key question or questions were you hoping to answer in writing this article? Yes, really, you know, when I thought about this in the, the of pausing for pedagogy, I really thought about just engaging in a conversation about online service learning and how technology can really enhance leadership education and specifically in service learning for this pedagogy that I'm going to talk about. Cool. So, as we mentioned, the title of this series is Pause for Pedagogy. So we're thinking really more about the practical or practice side of the work that we do in leadership education. So can you tell me more about the practice or pedagogy you discuss in the article? And where did the idea or need for this work come from? Yes, you know, really it came out of a need back in 2006. I was working at University of Illinois as a faculty member. I was hired there to actually create a, a department for service learning that would help with some general education requirements. They were really trying to push um, forward in engagement as part in the classroom. Um, they have a really large online population at the Springfield campus of University of Illinois. And so they asked me to create out of need some service learning courses that would be held in virtual environments. So the classroom space would actually be online because they have students around the world. They have a large military population and folks are, you know, placed all over the world. And so how can we do something like service learning or engagement in their community, what they will consider their local community, which is really a global community, but then how can they come together and have a service learning curriculum? And so uh, in 2006, that was really, it was a push. And so I started by looking at theory and saying, okay, how do I do this? Because at that time there was nothing out there. There was some on online teaching and learning, there was obviously things on service learning, but nothing combined the two pedagogies. And so really I dug into the theory and said, how can I combine these? And then went into practice and then went back to theory because it's really a theory to practice to theory kind of cycle because absolutely in the last 10 years that I've been doing this, needed a lot of revisions as new mm. technology comes out and new thoughts on service learning comes out. And so how do we continue to evolve this this pedagogy, which is a combination of pedagogies. Cool. And I like the idea of theory to practice and back to theory again. And I think what we've often talked about is theory informing practice, but very neat that practice can inform future theory too, especially keeping up with the changes in technology. Absolutely. And how do we continue to enhance that for students? Right. I think about you know, a lot of times there'll be faculty that are upset because their students are not engaged in class, but they're on their phone. And so I always think of, so how do I situate learning so that they're actually learning with their phone? Yeah. So whether that's engaging in social media, whether that's, you know, and that's in a face-to-face -face environment, but then thinking about how do we do that in an, a completely online environment? Right. And so a lot of the online service learning courses that I've developed is, there, you know, students can engage in community service in their local community in a face-to-face -face 
capacity, but they can also do something called virtual volunteering if they feel that being situated online is better for them 100% then would love for them to do that. Um, that's very, honestly, that's very um, rare that students will do that. They want to get into the communities and, and mm -hmm. go to the homeless shelters and the animal shelters and parks and I mean, that you can possibly think of, but how can they do that and then come back together in a virtual environment and really reflect on their experience. Mm -hmm. And that idea of virtual volunteering, I know, is something you touch on in your written article as well. And that's a new term for me, thinking about what service or service learning would look like in this sort of environment without physically being somewhere. That sounds like a new frontier for practice the theory and theory to practice. It really is, you know, and a lot of it is trial and error that I've worked yeah. with students on because there's not a, you know, honestly, there's not a lot of nonprofit organizations that will embrace that type of volunteering. Sure. Just because they don't know. It's not that they wouldn't want to, but it's just, you know, everyone's limited with resources. But I think some of the best examples of that is when students have become um, buddies with someone. It could be anywhere. They could be anywhere in the world, but, it, you know, online buddies. So they'll do Google Hangouts. They'll, you know, email back and forth, but to have a person that they can kind of mentor and have that online kind of hanging out process. Right. That's just one example of, you know, a student who really said, this is better for me. And I was like, go for it. And it really worked out wonderfully. Yeah. That's a whole new world of thinking about service learning. Online mentoring was something I hadn't really thought of before, but that would fall under the realm of service learning. Of course, now my brain is going to the practice side. So I'm going to come back to our questions for today because that's a whole other article and a whole dissertation topic probably for someone. Yeah. But, so what were your learning outcomes for this practice or pedagogy? And how did you assess whether those outcomes were met? Well, and as you know, like depending on the specific course, there would be different mm. objectives for that course. But really for the pedagogy as a whole, really thinking about it as, you know, a few things come to mind, you know, and, and again, has tightened up and evolved over the years, but really wanted students to be able to learn through self-direction. Because so often, you know, especially in a a face-to-face -face environment, you're there, you're face-to-face -face with them all, you know, two times a week sometimes, but really wanted them to have, feel empowered, but then also to be like, how do you direct yourself in learning and really connecting experiences to theory and that theory to practice piece, but then also how do you reflect and make meaning from your experiences and connecting it from the community service and the experiences you're having at your community service site to mm -hmm. the literature that we're reading and then discussing online. And so that reflective process was a big, a big piece of that. And then really, um, because one of the courses that I've taught now for 10 years and created was, is social change and leadership. And so this is definitely an, an example of an online service learning course that's situated in leadership education. I mean, it's very much a partnership. And so with that course, I really say it's oh geez about certain ones that we, you know, I borrowed from leadership education and my experience in that, and then the service learning and then the online environment. Mm -hmm. But that one, you know, really wanted to say, what are the global leaders? What have they done in their local communities and how? So recognizing those historical models, but then also yeah. thinking about different ways to make social change. And mm -hmm. so some people might be able to make social change, you know, and feel comfortable situated in an advocacy role. Some others might be in an action role through volunteering, some might be confrontational. And so how do we do social change? And one of the examples of a assignment that I do in that, that course is that I have them compare Andrew Carnegie, and these are both you know, in the American context, society context, but Andrew Carnegie and Jane Addams. And they really, you know, Andrew Carnegie gave a ton of money and Jane Addams went into Chicago and really did some great you know, social work types of um, action. And so thinking about both of them made social change, but how, you know, and that's just an example within the American context of two mm -hmm. very different individuals who made social change, but then how do we compare and contrast them? And how do you feel wherever you're situated at in the world being and doing and knowing how to make that social change? Mm -hmm. My mind is again going to so many different places, but the one question I'm going to ask and partly selfishly, because I'm doing a lot of work right now myself around experiential learning. So that's sort of the bigger umbrella under which a lot of the pieces that you're talking about fall under. And we know that reflection is such an important part of the experiential learning experience. Um, and how does reflection look in an online environment? Have you noticed any opportunities or challenges doing reflection in an online space as opposed to writing or 
um, perhaps more face to face. Right. You know, I, I'll be very honest. There, that was something that I was worried about when I first mm -hmm. engaged in this. I was worried that people wouldn't feel that they could bring their authentic selves to this yeah. experience, and it actually has turned out quite differently. Um, I do a section on social justice issues, which looks mm -hmm. very different, especially in a global context. And yeah. so, um, one semester, I and you know, I talk about the cycle of oppression and mm -hmm. some things that we discuss about identity development, but. You know, I had students out, I had four out of a class of 25, four of them were, uh, two of them were in Africa, and then two of them were in Europe, and discussing about what, what that means in that context. And so I was, I was a little, like, I was very on alert, and, and these are discussion boards, so it's a very asynchronous process where people will post, and then people can have that time to think about what their answer is going to be, where sometimes in a face-to-face -face class, people don't have that moment to pause and think about it. And so this would open up to some different um, students who would feel comfortable kind of pausing and thinking about it. And that's exactly what happened. People had really well thought out answers that I was blown away. And I, I literally reread all of that discussion thread. There was one specifically where people were really talking about the cycle of oppression and how it shows up and what can we do as future leaders or leaders right now. And so I think that moment to pause gave people the ability to get their thoughts in order and not just shut down, especially in a topic that we need to be engaging in such as that. And so mm -hmm. that making meaning process, you know, there is a few ways that we do it. The discussion board opportunity, which as I said, is engaging in question and answer. And that is one way that they reflect in the class. Another way is they do reflection journals. And I'm thinking again, back to that social change and leadership course. Yeah. And um, so the reflection journals is more connecting to the readings. And so there's multiple ways that they have opportunities to reflect because that is such a key piece, like you said, in the experiential learning model, but also in service learning and leadership education. And, mm -hmm. um, and it also keeps students engaged in an online environment. If they're able to see that it's going to, you know, it's really reflecting on how they're making meaning and something that they actually did. And, you know, then that makes the world a difference in them being continually engaged in the course. So, yeah. yeah, and I know you talked about this in your article as well, the access to those diverse perspectives, speaking of that you have students in Europe and students in Africa, and what an interesting and unique opportunity to gain those perspectives as opposed to Dr. Kathy Guthrie talking about the experience in Europe, someone in Europe or in Africa talking about that experience. Absolutely, and I think also it challenged the folks that are situated in you know, the American context being it, you know, that they're challenged by that. And I think mm -hmm. that's great. Get out yeah. of that bubble. <laughs> Do I dare say that? But the bubble no, yeah. to yeah. absolutely say what is happening and how, you know, oh, I shouldn't use that word. This is the context that's used. And right. so that the social justice um, unit that I did, I've really worked hard on that to really, you know, challenge and support students to really think about that in a global context because it is thinking, how does it show up differently? You know, not only community to community, but then you think globally and it's very different. Yeah. And of course there's a Canadian bubble too. I'm speaking from Canada and we have similar concerns, challenges and opportunities in our Canadian bubble as well. And while we have potentially different relationships with some of these countries, but the idea of even a North American versus European or other perspective um, would be fascinating for students to explore. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've talked about, speaking of fascinating areas to explore, good segue, Lisa, um, and next steps. Um, so obviously there are lots of questions and opportunities and other ways and means to think about this work. So where do you see future research or maybe even writing headed in this area? And what will you be writing about next? Yeah, so I've um, actually been engaged in collecting data for five years on the online service learning students because we've had over a thousand students go through the one specific course, the social change and leadership course. That mm -hmm. that one really because it it kind of marries the two things that I'm most passionate about: the leadership education and the um, well, actually the three things, right? Technology, service, yeah. and leadership. And so going back and doing interviews with them. Currently, I've done over 100 interviews, wow. just asking about different, really, you know, and some of the basic questions, because since there is not a lot of research out there saying, so did you learn what I had intended you to learn? I mean, yeah. basic things like that, but then also, how is it tying into what you're doing now? Did it make a difference? Did it not? How is that? And so really, you know, because my thought with especially 
the context, because institutional context, especially with any course, but especially with online service learning courses, is what did the institution want to do with this? Well, since it was a requirement, they wanted them to be engaged. Now, sometimes when you force that on someone, that could actually have a negative effect, which there's a ton of research out on that. But then thinking about did it or did it not? Like how did it engage you more in a community or were you more aware of a social, social issue? Did you feel empowered as a leader? I mean, there's a ton of different questions in that. But so really, I think this research is just beginning. There is um, some great resources out there, a few articles. Um, Minnesota Campus Compact has a Center for Digital Civic Education that is an excellent resource center um, that has, you know, if you look on their website, they have a list of resources. And so I really think it's just the beginning of it. I mean, it really is. And then also kind of looking at that virtual volunteering piece, I think a little bit more. How do we even engage in that? How do we work with agencies if that is something that they're able to create, maintain, sustain? Is that something that could be a future to open up the boundaries of, you know, the, the business being more of a global and using technology for good in that aspect? Absolutely. Wow. So it sounds like there are many dissertation topics and article topics and <laughs> yes. master's thesis topics and lots of <laughs> article. Yeah, that's exciting. Yep. So Kathy, is there anything else that you wanted to share? Any final thoughts, words of wisdom, or when people are reading your article, if they are curious about how they could get involved in this type of research or looking for ways to maybe expand the research they're already doing, what might you suggest? Yeah. Well, and I would say, um, not only for the researchers, but for those practitioners, I think as educators, we sometimes shy away because it's, it can be difficult, it's complex. Mm -hmm. You know, will the institution that I'm working at support it? And there's multiple questions in there. And you know, for me, it was a little bit different. They said, we need this. And so dive in and do it. But I would really encourage people to just dive in and do it because it's one of those things that, you know, um, the rewards are so plentiful, not only for the, the students, but for me as an educator, I've learned so much from students and their conversations and how they're sharing their experiences and how they make meaning from it. I'm able to learn from that. And that's an incredible opportunity for an instructor to be able to say that. And so it would be just dive in. But I also think there's support out there. You know, there's definitely support out there and to seek it out. And if anyone, you know, it's an open call that if anyone is wanting to um, have a conversation, please let me know. Awesome. And so when Kathy's article is shared, we'll have some contact information for Kathy. So if you have any questions or again, are looking to explore a dissertation topic or journal topic or master's thesis topic, or just looking to extend this conversation, uh, I think Kathy would certainly be open to that. And I know we at ILA would certainly be open to that as well. Lots of areas to explore upcoming, which is great. Well, thank you again, Kathy. Thank you for joining us in this new experiment, this new journey with us at ILA. Um, I think having the opportunity both to read and hear your words of wisdom is going to be greatly beneficial for our members. So thank you again for that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. So we will be uh, sharing Kathy's article. And by the time this video goes up, you may actually be able to read and watch this video, maybe not at the same time, but one right after the other. Uh, so look for uh, more of these conversations coming soon. And if this is of interest to you as an author, an educator, a practitioner, um, we are always looking for more people who might be interested in having these conversations with us. And ILA will be sharing uh, more ideas about how you can get involved in positive pedagogy very soon. Thanks again, everyone. Bye-bye.